الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أهبت في الله as we know in accordance with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of life is that everyone shall taste death everyone shall die and when someone dies when we hear the news of someone dying in accordance with the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un from Allah we came and to him we shall return and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Every soul shall taste death. Every soul shall taste death. That means you and I. That means our parents. That means all our loved ones, our children. Those far and near to us will taste death. So that reflection upon death is for the believer to reflect upon and the believer to realize and reaffirm the divine purpose of why we're here why we were created kama qala allah ta'ala wa ma khalaqtu al jinna wal ins illa liya'budun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. Our divine purpose is what? Is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the wadifa of the mu'min. That is the believer, that is the job, the objective of the believer is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the objective and in fact the means that and the ultimate objective is Jannah is to be forgiven of our sins to enter into paradise without any reckoning without any accounting for the sins and the things and the shortcomings that we had in this dunya. So that's the ultimate aim for the mu'min is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reflecting on death often helps the mu'min fulfill that divine purpose that the more we think of our leaving this dunya the more we realize how short our time in this dunya is for example, now we've entered into a, a new year. Another year in our life has gone by according to the Christian calendar or that we're in 2017, January 2017. Where did 2016 go? How many people did we lose in 2016? How many people you knew and how many people you didn't know who died in 2016? And so, for the mu'min, every day, every minute is a chance to reflect on his or her shortcomings, the mistakes, the sins, and reflect on death. And to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often. And realizing that, and acknowledging that, will 
help you to do good, to help you to do good deeds and leave behind as all of us are going to leave our loved ones behind. One day they'll put you in the ground and perhaps your children may bicker over your property if you had anything to leave them. Perhaps your spouses or spouse may have enmity between them. Or perhaps the other outcome, it could be a good way. But regardless, they're all going to leave you. You will be alone again. You will return to Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. So we will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا مَاتَ مَرْعِي أَنْ قَتَ الْعَمَلَهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ that when a person dies, that their deeds leave them, or everything will leave them except three. Everything will leave you except three, subhanAllah. And that's true. The nice watches you had, the nice clothing you had, that lovely vehicle that everyone coveted, the beautiful spouse that you had, or handsome husband, that the woman had, whatever the case may be, whatever you had, all of it will leave you. Every single one, the woman perhaps will remarry. The husband perhaps will remarry. The children will go about their own lives and be busy with trying to follow and chase their rizq perhaps. Your wealth will be given away or inherited or taken or left behind or thrown away. But the Prophet Sallallahu said, إِلَّ مِنْ ثَلَاثِ Except three. The first, قَالْ الْعَمَلَ الصَّدَقَ جَارِيَةً The first thing he said, الصَّدَقَ جَارِيَةً The continuous charity. That could be a trust. That could be something you left behind which people continue continually benefit from after your death and that will benefit you in the grave and that will benefit you in the hereafter it could be charity money you spent on building a masjid you could have had a shit controlling share in a masjid whatever the case may be that you left behind something that the people benefited from long after your death a sadaqa jariya the continuous charity a place for the students of knowledge to benefit then, I said the kajaria. Well, elm yantavabi, and knowledge that the people benefit from. So perhaps, if Allah favored you to be a scholar, or favored you to be from ahl elm, to be a, a person who calls people to the Quran and the Sunnah with elm with knowledge, and left behind students left behind books, left behind recorded lectures that perhaps if it was done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the people benefit from it, you help change other people's lives and help other people to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then perhaps you will have al-ilm you will have knowledge that the people benefit from and the third being a habita fillah وَوَلَدٍ صَالِحٍ Or leaving behind a righteous child that supplicates for you. So also that you raise your children. So that's an admonishment for us who have children to raise them. Set an example for them. Call them to khair. Direct them to good. Be in their lives. And may Allah forgive us of our many, many shortcomings. Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen. Guide them to the straight path. Guide them to the path of Ahl Sunnah. And in hopes that they have love for you, that they're on righteousness, and they will supplicate for you while you're in your grave continuously. And that they will do good deeds on your behalf for those deeds that are mashroor to do on your behalf. Sadaqah on your behalf. Umrah on your behalf. 
Hajj on your behalf, other acts of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah grant us with all three. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabiyyana Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. Wa sallam.